Did you ever have a feeling when you were growing up that you had to do something crazy? I did. It was early June of my third year of high school when Joe Dillon and myself concocted a plan to have a day on the town. It was Joe who introduced me to the idea of not following the rules. This was always most evident when we would play football. And Manchester United takes the FA Cup defending champs! I didn't know what you were actually playing. Are you kidding me? You're wanking where I was playing. Joe's older brother, Leo, was one year older than us. He was just about off to college and had rarely ever done anything outside of his comfort zone. And yeah, we ourselves had never really gotten out much. It was our job to help Leo know everything about the real world and also do the things we were too scared to do ourselves. He could also buy cigarettes. If there was anything that Joe understood more than anyone, it was that Joe understood what escape really meant. Joe was one of the biggest purveyors of comic books at the school, which really shocked our literature teacher, Mr. Butler. Could it be Joe, David Copperfield, or The Simpsons? Is this really what you're reading instead of Charles Dickens? I'll tell you what, you young twerk. You'll not find any more of this crap in college. Comic books are written by depressive alcoholics who only seek escape. I'm surprised it's found such a knack with you, young Joe. No, sir. Now, let's get back to real work. Despite all of Joe's brutish and immature nature, his parents were some of the most die-hard Catholics I've ever met. Do you think Jesus was able to sleep while he was dying on the cross? To everyone's surprise, Joe would grow up to join the seminary. And then there was Jeffrey Mahoney. I only ever recall being friends with Jeffrey because his parents were the only parents in the neighborhood who didn't understand video game ratings. And Jeffrey himself never understood the value of teamwork. No, no. What are you no. talking about? I was no. driving the car. I'm no, I'm driving, no, I'm driving the car. You've been driving the car. No, I'm driving the car. You drove the car. No, I'm driving the car now. I want to drive the car. No, I'm driving the car. I always drive the car. He was still a good kid at heart. And plus his older sister would help get us out of school, for a price. We'd each saved 30 quid. I only had 10 quid left after I paid off Jeffrey's oldest sister to make up an excuse for Jeffrey and I to the attendance office. Leo was too uncool to come with us. He had to let Joe's teachers know that he was homesick. Besides the obvious concern of being caught, there wasn't any real threat to our plan. We were just gonna go to the waterfront and do what tourists do, and then probably end up doing something we would regret along the way too. All right, till tomorrow, mates. Hey, how are you? So worried about that old Mr. Bunzer showing up and writing us all detentions? Hey, man, I wasn't actually worried about that. I mean, run that up the flagpole with Joe. He certainly almost crapped his pants about it. Speaking of which, have you seen Joe? No. Think he's gonna show up? I mean, I don't know why not. Why would he go to school today? Thought something bad might happen. Oh, I guess that'll be the day. No 
don't think he's going to show. Come on, man. Let's just go. I don't want to wait for him. I mean, I thought we, that we would uh, put our money together or something. Yeah, well, I don't want to wait for him any longer. And besides, we could buy something for ourselves. Sure. You ready to go? Yeah. All right. out there hell no one even notice us yeah I think our uh, ties would kind of give it away yeah we'll probably be asking us questions about why we're not in school yeah but seriously do you ever think about getting away I don't know I think it's all a bit delusional don't you know I mean I want to but I can't you know yeah I know what you mean my sister's trying to get an apartment but she can't even do her own laundry yeah I wonder what Joe and Leora are doing right now Joe's probably getting a talking to from Mr. Bunzer. You want to say that to Mr. Bunzer's face? <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't pick up that bird poop over there. Why would I do that? Because it looks just like your tartar sauce. Come on, why would you say that? Come on, man, just live a little. No, fuck that. No, come on, man. Fuck you. Do it. You fucking made me lose my appetite. It's kind of your fault. Fuck you. I don't think we'll be able to make it to the waterfront. My parents will be looking for me about after four. You worry too much. I guess. See that guy over there? Yeah, what's his deal? He's lost. Maybe he's homeless or something. You mind if I stand over here? Uh, sure, go ahead. You guys are school kids, right? I remember school, high school. Happiest days of my life. I was only concerned with two things. Girls and books. You guys read any Walter Scott? Uh, Lord Lytton? Scott? I've, 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 I've read a bit of his stuff. Uh, Lord Lytton, yeah, I've read his stuff. Yeah, great writer. Great, great writer. Yeah, no, he's fantastic. You're really like me. Not so sure about your uh, friend over there, though. He seems like he's more into games. I think some of Lighten's best works are books that boys like you can't read. Why can't we read them? Shut up. <laughs> so, you guys have girlfriends? What about you, funny boy? Do you have a girl? I have three. No, sir. I don't. Come on. You have a girlfriend. Really? A handsome young buck like yourself? How many girlfriends do you have, sir? Oh, I had plenty back in the day. Like, 10 or 20. <laughs> but come on, every boy has a girlfriend. Don't you? It's just something about those girls, man. Their soft hair and their soft hands. And they're all so good looking, too. So soft. There's nothing like seeing a nice young lady with gorgeous hair and pretty hands. Such pretty hands. Hands. And they're all so good looking too. They're so soft. Excuse me for a second.
I think I want to go home, Jeffrey. I agree. Wait, what if he comes back? Uh, we'll have fake names. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be Doyle, and uh, you'll be Murphy. Good plan, good plan. Wait, where'd he go? What's he doing over there? Seems like your friend needs some discipline. They still whip kids in school? No, sir. Well, they oughta. I always thought a good whipping would get a boy in shape. Cheating on a tester, looking at a girl, and having that girl's parents call the cops, bad news. Whipping is the only solution. Boys need to be chastised. It's the only way to get them to learn. Slapping his hands or boxing his ears? No. Not good enough. A belt. A black belt. It's the only way. If I ever saw a boy talking to a girl in a bad way, that's a whipping. For having a girlfriend or two, that's a strong whipping. That'll teach him not to talk to girls. And oh boy, if I lied about having a girlfriend, I would need a whipping even more. I need a whipping. Dignified. I just don't get why they tasered me. That didn't help me. That didn't help anyone. That should have just whipped me. I hope you understand me. I just need some drugs. Can you hook me up? I have to go. Uh, Murphy! What's wrong? What's wrong? So I guess I'll see you tomorrow then? Give Joe a good beating? What? Safe to say, it was an experience I wasn't prepared for. I did want to do something crazy, but I guess not all encounters are good ones.